I'm here with Joe Rotella, and we are making some amazing pop-up cards. And Joe, we already have the electronic cutter going to go ahead and cut some of our pieces out, but you're gonna talk to us about the mechanics of how this yeah, works. Yeah. And pop-up cards are a form of paper engineering. So I think I even like that term. There's six basic folds that give something the pop that we're looking for. This is called a floating plane, because when you open the card, it looks like this is floating on one plane so cool. above the surface and that you could put your hands all the way around it. Well, the magic part is that underneath there are three I-beams that basically support this card. And it's the I-beams that lift that motif up off the surface. That's super neat. And so what you're cutting now is both the I-beam and the big part, but you actually had another tip I know, which is about the size that you make the platform. You know, you can do a lot of math to figure out how big the pieces can be, because what happens is we're tempted, look, you could make this look huge, and it floats just great. The problem is when we close the card, it, it sticks, sticks out. out of the top. So when I make pop-ups, I tend to make these mock-ups, always in white with all these parallel lines, because then I can say, okay, this is gonna stick out. What if I take an inch off? Okay, that's gonna work. So now I know the biggest thing that I can fit when it's popped up this high is six inches by six inches. Does that make sense? It does, and now that this is done cutting, I can just pull off for you and I can see that what you've done is basically out of a pretty paper, or this is pretty heavy, like cardstock or something. You're basically cutting the pieces that you need for the card. Correct, so these I-beams have to have slits, and why I love making pop-up cards on an electronic cutting machine is because you have to be a little bit precise. So are these the things that you're talking about as I-beams, these weird, like, trapezoidy, hexagonal correct, something? Correct. Okay. And what we're gonna do is these always have to be parallel to the center fold of the card. They don't have to be straight in a center line, but they have to be parallel. And when we take that I-beam and fold it in half, you can then spread the top. And the cutting machine makes these score lines, so it just folds beautifully. And you get these little tiny capital letter eyes. Oh, that, that's why it's called, called an eye beam. beam. What we need to do is put adhesive on those eyes. On one side, it has to be on the outside. Okay. And on one side, on the inside. That's because when you put it in the card, the outside version is gonna hold underneath the card. The inside oh. version is gonna hold your this motif. This really is paper engineering. Like, we are really talking about how yep. things are structured together. So let's start to put it together. We also have oh, a motif. Sorry. In this case, mm -hmm. I've got a butterfly. Yeah. And if you wanna start cutting one of those out, we can do that too. Okay, well I've I wanna see some. how you put in the I-beams so first. So the I-beams, all we do is slide them right in the slit that the cutting machine made. So you may do it from the bottom. And then we're gonna spread it out and just put our double-sided adhesive I in see, place. so that's why it has to be on the outside because it's sticking to the like underside of the card. And you know, you it, don't worry if you goof it up because I've done that. I've put it on the wrong side. <laughs> Me too. And you know what? You always learn more from mistakes than from successes because you'll never make that mistake again once you've pulled it out 40 times. But you don't even have to pull it out because we would never send someone a card where you could see all this. So this oh. card nestles inside of just a solid card. So that's all going to be hidden anyway. So you're never Correct. even going to see it. See, we don't want to see all that mess. Okay. So we take all that mess. And, and we're you gonna basically put, it put a wrapper around it. Right, and now we have a nice card on the outside and something nice on the inside. Cool. So let's see, where's my other I-beam? Okay, well you put in that last I-beam. I'm gonna take this butterfly and put it down onto my sticky mat here. I always wanna really adhere it as well as I can to the mat. And then I'm going to load it into the electronic cutter. And then we just wanna cut around, do we wanna cut exactly on the line or do we wanna leave a margin? Does it matter? Like, is it there a personal I, preference? I like exact because you know I like precise things. I know that you like precise. Okay, so I am just going to ask the machine to scan it in and then we will cut exactly on the line so that you get exactly what you want. Now, the cool thing here, I mm -hmm. don't have these I-beams exactly in a straight line. Oh, I didn't even realize that. That's true, they're sort of. Well, because when you look at your butterfly, his wings spread out. So I wanna support the upper wing oh, and the middle of the body. So depending on what the shape is that you're popping up, you actually really wanna think about how you're arranging those supports. And as long as those I-beams are parallel to the center line of the card, it's gonna work fine. Now the butterfly, you know, it, it cuts out beautifully, yeah. but the antenna are a little bit too fine. Okay, so what do we do about that? 
Well, I used paintbrush bristles. Okay, you're gonna have to walk me through that one. So these antenna that mm -hmm. are here, you're telling me are actually yeah. a bristle from here. You just take a paintbrush bristle, cut it out, and stick it on the back. Oh, I can see, and you just use some adhesive on the back there to hold it on, and, and that looks them. so cool. Yeah, it's perfect for, for little bug shapes. That's, I love that, I'm gonna have to do that now with all my butterflies. Oops, so, it's already done. I'm gonna use one I already have. I've scored it down the center. Okay. And how you put the pop-up together is also important. So we wanna make sure that we have this bug, in this case our butterfly, centered, just great and then I can support that, right? I have the, so this side I've peeled away. I haven't peeled this side yet. Okay. But this side I've peeled away. Don't try to line it up yourself. You'll never get this straight. Oh. Instead, fold it down, open your eye beam. Okay. And then fold the whole card. Keep your butterfly kind of in mid-flight. Oh, wow. So actually it's in the folding of the card that the and placement now, is happening. That side's perfect. I see, so that's why we didn't remove the adhesive from both sides. Now we'll go ahead and do this side. And cool. that way we know that that butterfly is going to be perfect on our little eye beams. This is such an easy way to get it to be perfect. You really don't have to think or measure or worry about it. Just by closing the card, you know that it's but gonna be right. That looks so cool. And of course our butterfly cut out perfectly just as you wanted. And now I can see that when somebody opens this card, it's gonna be a surprise. So let's just go over how you get the wrapper around here so that we don't see all of this. So we get that professional yep. finish. So I've got a wrapper or another outside card pre-scored. Okay. The other little trick is if you're gonna decorate the outside of the card, you wanna do it now because this is easiest to do flat. So in one of the examples, I put a vinyl decal on the outside and it was easy to do flat, it's hard to do bumpy. Okay. So all I'm gonna do is get this folded up. If you could hold that down yeah. for one second. Of course, She's crafting with springy. a friend means that you She's always have springy. the benefit of an extra set of hands. And you, we're gonna do the same trick when we put the card together. I'm only gonna put adhesive though on the spine okay. because if we don't get it just right, I do wanna be able to pull it apart and you know, fiddle with it. I feel like this is the voice of experience, having put it in potentially it not quite straight previously, because I always know that the reason that I come up with crafting tips is because I've made mistakes. So all I'm gonna do is mm -hmm. I've got my fold started. I'm trying to center this because there's a little mat around it. And I'm gonna just close the top onto the card. So that's another good tip. So to cut the outside card slightly larger, which is also makes it, I assume, a little more forgiving as well. And now I could go ahead and add more adhesive here if okay. I like the placement. I add the adhesive here and that whole card is done. That is super cool, Joe. Let's take a look at some of the finished cards that you brought. And I see that like this butterfly obviously was a symmetrical design, but you don't have to have it be a symmetrical you don't design. Have to. So in the koi card, you can see that koi is Definitely not a symmetrical shape. But again, all I did was lay it on my mock-up, my platform, to figure out, okay, will it fit? How big can it be? And then I used the lines on my mock-up to decide where do I put supports for his big tail and his big fat head. There's always one in the middle of the card, in the center line. And then, boom, off you do with the electronic cutting machine, they're gonna be perfectly straight, perfectly parallel. That's why I love making them. This is a, a really cool technique, and I feel like it makes me feel like I can make a pop-up like this, and I can really customize it for what I wanna put in the middle. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Joe. This was fantastic.